Hey, and welcome back to Pokemon Breaks. Today we have another starting your collection video, and I wanted to answer your questions about storing and protecting your card collection. Obviously, we spend a lot of time and money investing into these collections, so we want to keep our cards safe and sound for the future, whether you want to sell them down the track or keep them for your kids or future generations, whatever it is, you don't want to damage these cards that you've spent time and money on. I'm going to share some of my personal preferences of how I like to store and protect my cards. I'll share some of the products that I really enjoy and some of the things that I don't use very often and let you know why. If you have different preferences, for how you like to store and protect your cards, please leave them in the comments down below. I'd love it if we could use this as an opportunity to help others in the community and learn from each other. To start off with, how you like to store and protect your cards is gonna depend a lot on how you like to use them. If you're a competitive player, you're gonna have very different preferences to someone who is more of a collector. Into collecting, some people like to keep their cards in binders where they can see a whole variety of cards or a whole set at one time, whereas others might prefer to keep them in more separate storage modes. I'll walk through some of the products that I really like, talk about the pros and cons of each, and hopefully that helps you make some decisions about what you would like to do to store and protect your own collection. So whether you are more interested in collecting or playing, you're going to need to know about sleeves. The first kind of sleeves I'm going to talk about are called penny sleeves. These are the least expensive kind of sleeves that you can find. In Australian dollars, they're usually between three and five dollars for packs of a hundred. Ultra Pro is a really common and popular brand. You want to make sure that all of your sleeves are acid free. That's really important because it's going to protect them from um, the sun and from discoloration. Um, Hyper Breaks is a local break group that makes their own sleeves. So that's um, from an Aussie creator. Ultimate Guard makes sleeves. Um, Let's Play Games make sleeves, so does Palms Off Gaming, so do a ton of other companies. Um, so penny sleeves are probably the most common type of sleeves that you will see, and I guess they're really good because they do protect your cards from scratches um, as well as from dust. So this is an example of a penny sleeve that I decanted earlier. Um, so with a penny sleeve, you can just slide your card in quite easily. It's not super snug. You're going to see that there is a little bit of wiggle room around, so they can move around a tiny bit, which can contribute to a little bit of scratching. Um, there's a gap at the top so that you could get some dust inside. If you've got really expensive or rare cards, this is definitely not enough protection. Uh, but if it was a more common card that you just wanted to keep nice and safe for later on, I think this should be enough, particularly if you're storing it with one of the other storage methods that we talk about later on to keep it from bending because obviously this isn't going to protect it at all from any bending. Beyond penny sleeves, we've got what's called deck protector sleeves. So these two actually came out of Pokemon Elite Trainer Boxes. This one was from Fusion Strike and this one was from Shining Fates. Um, so these deck protector sleeves are a little bit different from the um, penny sleeves. And the reason is, first of all, um, they are not translucent on both sides. So they have a pattern on the background. So this one was from Hidden Fates. Um, and then they are just clear in the front. So if we take that jiggly puff, I'll show you what it looks like in this deck protector sleeve. Um, it's a little bit more snug in here. There's not quite as much wiggle room. And you'll also notice that these sleeves are not quite as flimsy, so they don't bend quite as much. Um, and you've got that nice pattern on the background. So if you're playing competitively and you wanted to have a deck that had a really nice uniform appearance, these kinds of sleeves are a really good option. Um, obviously the ones that I've chosen came just within an Elite Trainer Box, so they were no extra cost. Um, you can buy these deck protector sleeves from a ton of different brands. There, um, there are Pokemon ones. Um, there are also, a, there's a brand called Dragon Shield is one example that's relatively expensive, but they're really good ones. Um, so there's a ton of different brands that you can find um, and that the price is gonna range quite a lot depending on what you choose from. Um, the, nor the newer range of Pokemon deck protector sleeves tends to be matte on the front rather than completely translucent. I'm just trying to find the front. So this is the Shining Fates one. Um, and you'll notice that the front of this one is matte, so it sort of does mattify the look of the card a little bit. Um, I actually like that when I'm playing competitive games of any sort, um, having that matte front is a lot better because you don't get quite as distracted by the glare on holographic cards. Um, but for storing a collection, um, you want to be able to see all of your hollows. So I don't like these matte sleeves for um, storage so much. 
Another option for sleeves is called Perfect Fit Sleeves. These are all by a Japanese brand called KMC, but there are different brands that make these Perfect Fit Sleeves. Um, the reason these ones are special is because they are much more snug on the card. So that's why they're called a Perfect Fit. Um, and that allows you to do something called double sleeving, which I'll show you. Um, these ones tend to be a little bit more expensive. Um, a lot of the time in Australia, at least, you're paying like eight to $10 for a hundred pack. So they are relatively expensive. Um, the real benefit to using this one though, um, is if you put your card in a perfect fit sleeve, you're gonna notice that it's pretty snug. Um, so I'd encourage you to be careful when you're doing this um, because you don't wanna bend the card or push it into the corners or anything like that. But you can see when you've got it in the perfect fit that there's really no gap around the outside at all. Um, and that's a real benefit because the card's not gonna move around. Um, when you have it just in a penny sleeve or just inside a deck protector, when it's got that little bit of movement, if there's any dust at all inside of that, you, you can scratch your card unintentionally. Um, whereas you, if you've got it inside of this perfect fit there's really no movement so there's going to be no scratching at all um, the other benefit to using these perfect fit sleeves is that you can do something called double sleeving um, so this perfect fit is really snug and you could actually put a penny sleeve on the outside of this um, and you'll notice I'm putting it the other way so the card went in um, from the top down to the bottom so the gap is at the top of this card and I'm popping it into the penny sleeve the other way. So now there's actually no gap in terms of the protection around this card at all. So there's no way that dust could get into this anyway. Um, so it's completely protected that way. Obviously it could still get bent, um, but we're protecting it from dust getting in in any angle at all. Um, if we did the same thing, I would really encourage you, if you're playing competitively, if you're going to tournaments, um, I would encourage you to double sleeve all of your cards as well using um, these deck protector sleeves. Um, and the reason for that is, again, you're not gonna get any dust. There's gonna be nothing getting in there. You've got just that extra little bit of protection, um, but this deck protector type sleeve is gonna prevent a little bit more bending than say a um, penny sleeve would. Um, so that's the different kinds of sleeves to be aware of. Um, and these sleeves are definitely gonna come in handy. So the other protection methods that we're talking about, these ones are still gonna be a really important first layer of protection. Um, so definitely still use sleeves when we get into these other methods as well. Since we're talking about playing competitively, I'm going to touch on deck boxes because if you're going to a competition or a tournament, you obviously want to be able to store your cards and transport them safely. Um, the base level of deck boxes looks like this. So this is just an ultra pro um, basic deck box. These cost around $5 each. Obviously mine has my little pony on it, which I think is super cute. Um, I've got magic cards in here, but it'll still serve our purpose. Um, so within these boxes, I've double sleeved all of these cards. So you've got room for a play deck which is great there's a little divider if you wanted to separate anything out which is also really useful um, so these ones are relatively cheap they're sturdy ish um, if you had them in a box without much heavy stuff i think that your cards would be pretty safe they're not going to move around too much which is great if you wanted to go the extra mile, they do make premium deck boxes, and these are a really great investment, particularly if you're really into playing competitively or you have more expensive cards within your deck. Um, so this is by a brand called Ultimate Guard. It's a pretty sturdy leather covered box. It's got a nice magnetic closure, which is lovely. Um, on the inside, it's almost velour, so it's not gonna scratch anything. Um, and you've got room for pretty much twice as many cards as a standard deck box within this one. So I've actually got two playable magic decks in here, just separated with a device. Provider. Again, all of these cards are double sleeved. Um, this is another brand of those deck protector sleeves. This is called Dragon Shield. They're a little bit more expensive, um, but they're really good, I guess, for protecting your cards. They don't bend or anything like that. Um, so that is a more premium deck box. If you wanted to go one step further, <laughs> There are these massive premium boxes. So again, this is by the same brand, Ultimate Guard. I actually picked this one up today. Um, and I guess just thinking that life is starting to go back to normal, tournaments are starting to happen again. I thought I might like to have something special like this. Um, the reason I thought this would be good to have is you've got a lot more room in here. Um, so again, you've got these magnetic closures. Um, you've got room for essentially two deck boxes worth of cards in these drawers, um, but then you've also got a drawer in the middle where you can put all of your extras. So I thought that would be good for things like dice, damage counters, um, coins, all that sort of stuff. So this will be really handy, I think. I'm excited to use it. I will report back and let you know how I go. This one was a bit more expensive. It was around $60, but I am happy to have it. Even if you wanted to just use boxes like this for storing cards, it would be okay. It would definitely keep your cards safe, but obviously a little bit more expensive. 
Now, this is where you're gonna find a little bit of a divide, and this is between collectors that prefer to be able to see their whole collection at once, who are gonna lean more towards a binder, versus people that might be collecting specifically chase cards, or they wanna be able to keep their cards extra safe, um, and they might lean more towards these sort of single storage methods. So I'm gonna show you both. I actually prefer to use both for different things, so I'll talk through them each. As far as single card storage methods, you've got loads of different options. Um, one option I'll talk about is grading sleeves. So again, a ton of different brands make these grading sleeves. I have LPG ones, I haven't used these yet. Palms Off Gaming is another really popular brand for these grading sleeves, and this is what they look like. So they're relatively thin, sort of flimsy plastic. They are a bit larger than the card size itself. Um, one reason I don't like to use these very much for my own cards is it's really hard to get the cards in and out. Um, so if you wanted to get a card out of one of these, you'd essentially have to sort of pull it open a little bit so you could squeeze your fingers in and then just gently pull your card out. Um, if you wanted to send your cards for grading, often they want them in these semi rigid grading sleeves. Um, and I guess my suggestion would be, if you're gonna do that, would be use a little tab, um, like a little sticky tape tab on the back of the sleeve, not the card, the sleeve that the card is inside um, so that the graders can pull it out quite easily. Um, you can also use these if you're sending cards that you perhaps sold on eBay or are trading with friends in the mail. Um, I guess just remembering that they are pretty flimsy, so you need some extra protection to keep the cards from bending. I would also definitely recommend if you're using any of these other methods that I'm going to talk about that you still sleeve your cards. So you'll notice that the Venusaur in here is inside of a perfect fit sleeve um, and that way it's not going to get scratched. So within these thicker plastic sleeves there could be dust, there could be texture on the plastic. Um, so you definitely don't want to be putting cards in here raw, you want them inside of another sleeve for a bit more protection. So this is a semi-rigid sleeve. They don't tend to be very expensive. You'll usually be able to get a pack of 50 for around 10 Australian dollars. So they're not too much at all. Um, I guess one benefit is they are pretty thin. So if you're trying to store a lot of cards and you have a box that's wide enough, um, these are a good option for that as long as you have them protected from being able to bend around. What I tend to use rather than those semi-rigid sleeves is the more rigid top loader sleeves. Um, so this is a top loader and you'll notice the plastic here is thicker. So these do not bend quite as much. It's also a fair bit smaller than the grading sleeve, so you can see it's not quite as wide. These are a little bit easier to store in the way that I like to store my cards personally, um, and it, I prefer them because I think they're easier to get the cards in and out of. You want to get them out, I would suggest just gently tapping them. You can use a table. Um, I usually use the back of my hand, um, tap them until it starts to come out the top and you can easily pull it out by the sleeve so you're not scratching or bending anything. Um, if you wanna put it back in, just gently push it in until it um, you know, starts to sort of catch. It'll get a bit tighter, snugger down the bottom. Um, once you get to that point, you can just tap it on the table until it's back into the top loader. Um, these are the ones I use all the time. I really like top loaders. Um, I have, Hyper Breaks brand at the moment, Ultra Pro makes them, Palms Off Gaming, tons of different companies make them. Um, usually you're gonna be paying around five or six dollars for a pack of 25 of top loaders. These have been a little bit harder to get a, to find lately, um, I think because more people are into collecting cards, but that's roughly the price point that you'd tend to pay in Australia. Um, and again, I would definitely say you need to have your card sleeved before you put them in a top loader. That's gonna have hard plastic, it might be textured, it might have dust in it. So make sure you sleeve your cards before you put them in here. I usually just use penny sleeves. Um, that is what I would recommend that you do. Um, it's the least expensive, it's gonna keep all the dust and protect your cards quite well. I usually don't recommend putting the sleeve on upside down. And the reason is when you try to put the card back in the top loader, you usually find that the sleeve starts to ride up and then you're gonna have the, the bottom part of the card not being protected. So I have um, this in the sleeve going down into the bottom and the same way into the top loader. Um, I would suggest that you offer your top loaders some additional protection depending on how you're storing them. So if they're not going into a box that has a lid on it that's gonna keep the dust out, I would suggest putting your top loaders inside of what's called team bags if they're not in another storage location where they're gonna keep dust out. So team bags, again, usually they're around $5 for a hundred bags. So they're not too expensive. And what you can do is just put the top loader inside of the team bag. Again, they come in all different sizes. Um, it's got adhesive and then you would just fold this around um, and that's gonna keep literally anything out of that top loader. So there's no dust, nothing going into it. It's very well protected. What I often like to do is keep my top loaded cards inside of a box that has a lid on it. So I store my toppies inside of this Elite Trainer box with the lid on it. 
So it's keeping everything out. They're quite well protected inside of this Elite Trainer Box. That's another really good way to repurpose your ETBs as well, is they make great card storage. You may have noticed inside of that Elite Trainer Box, I have one other storage method, and that is called a one-touch case. So I have a few different options of one-touches lying around. This is an Ultra Pro one-touch. Um, this is a different variety of one-touch. It's called a mini snap, so it's just a slightly smaller version that fits the same size card, um, but doesn't have as much plastic around it. Um, and this is by Ultimate Guard. So similarly, these these products tend to cost about $5 each. So I wouldn't use them for cards that aren't more expensive or special to you. I tend to only one touch cards that are worth more than like around $100. Um, and it's because the storage method is more expensive. Um, but these one touches are really good at protecting cards. So they're much thicker plastic. Um, they seal all the way around the outside. So you're not going to get any dust or anything inside to damage the card. Um, and you also want to make sure that you're always putting your cards in a sleeve, whether it's a penny sleeve, ideally a perfect fit, but this one's in a penny sleeve um, to make sure that they're really well protected from dust and potential scratches. So this is a one touch um, and it's just a magnetic clasp at the top to help you open it and close it. Um, so I like to keep my top loaders and one touches inside of an ETB. And then I actually sort depending on what variety of card and use the one touch as a bit of a divider. So I know what section I'm looking at within the box. The final and most expensive way that you can store single cards is by grading them. So you can send your Pokemon cards off to lots of different companies and have them professionally authenticated and graded out of 10, and they will put them in these slabs. And the slabs are completely sealed all the way around the outside. So you've got your card inside a sleeve, and then it's actually inside this slab that's gonna completely protect it from water. Um, they generally have some sort of UV sun protection, um, obviously dust, and you're completely protecting your card. Now, this slab itself is not protected. So one thing that you can do with these slabs to actually protect the slab itself from potentially getting scratched is use what's called a graded card sleeve. So graded card sleeves look like this. This is by ProSafe brand, but there's a whole bunch of different brands that make them. These sleeves actually fit around any sort of graded card and will protect it from potentially getting scratched, which is great. Obviously, if you've made the investment in a graded card, it tends to be expensive, so you wanna protect it and keep it from getting damaged. That This Pokemon card was graded by an Australian company called CGA, so I'm always happy to support Aussie businesses. If you wanted to go for one of the bigger, more popular companies, um, PSA is one that you're gonna see everywhere. It's very well trusted, so this is what a PSA slab looks like, and this is inside of a graded card sleeve. Um, and Beckett is another really well trusted well-known brand. So they are very beautiful slabs as well. Um, I really like that labeling and the sort of translucent top with the silver. Um, so they're really good looking slabs. They're both pretty um, thick plastic, very hardy. You're definitely going to protect your cards in these. So storing graded cards is a little bit more difficult because obviously they are quite wide. Um, I would definitely recommend you get a nice box to keep them in where they're not going to be scratching up against each other um, and particularly for more expensive ones make sure that you're putting them inside of these graded card sleeves to protect them from potentially getting scratched. Now as far as storing bulk cards I usually like to use these cheap cardboard boxes that you can get from game stores. Um, there's loads of different options. This is kind of a single size that I think fits around 250 cards, um, but you can get massive ones that have like four rows for you know thousands of cards if you want to. Um, the way I like to use these is specifically just for my bulk cards. Um, I separate them by set or by category using the dividers that come in ETBs, or if I don't have enough of those, I just cut myself some dividers using cardboard. Um, I tend to sleeve holographic bulk cards but then the rest of my bulk I don't usually put in sleeves um, particularly if you're gonna sell your bulk they won't want it in sleeves anyway so it would be a waste of your time and energy which is not good um, so these boxes you can pick up for usually a couple of dollars the bigger ones sometimes run like 10 15 but again you can fit thousands of cards in them so it's gonna take you a while to fill it up so moving on to the final method of protection that we're going to talk about, and that is binders. There's quite a few different options available. Um, the first one I'm going to talk about is just using binder pages. So you can buy these singly for around 50 cents each, or you can get a box and it'll be a little bit cheaper per unit. Um, these are all by Ultra Pro. These are their premium binder sleeves, which I like because they're a little bit thicker, a little bit more protective of the cards. Um, these are just some random cards that I think are sweet and like to be able to look at. So they don't really go in any particular sets. A lot 
of them are promos, but they're just cards that I enjoy. One thing I would recommend being really careful about with these types of loose binder sleeves is I would not recommend actually storing them in a ringed binder. The reason for that is where the rings are, it's gonna put a lot of pressure on the cards that are on this side of the binder. They're gonna get damaged and dented, which you obviously don't want. Um, I like to use these and I actually store them in the box that the sleeves come in. Um, that way they are flat. There's no particular pressure points. So you're not gonna be getting that sort of damage and that pressure point on those cards on the edge. Um, if you really wanted to, I guess you could put something like energies down that sort of center row and only use the outer rings um, and put it in a ringed binder. But that seems like it might be a little bit more work than it's worth. Um, but I like to use these and I just store them in a box so they're flat and that is what I do with them. Again, um, I would definitely recommend that you always sleeve your cards before you put them in here. Still look for acid free ones because they will offer a little bit more protection for your cards. In terms of binders, there's quite a few different options. This is probably one of the most common ones I would see. This is just a ultra pro nine card per page binder. Um, I like these a lot. Some of the things I really enjoy about these particular binders, um, they do feel pretty sturdy. There's no rings, so there's no particular pressure points. Um, the quality on all of the pages is really, really good. Um, and they are also all side loaders. So the cards load in this way. Um, the reason that's really good is that most of your penny sleeves are gonna be top loaded um, and that means you've got a little capacity to get dust or something in across the top but when you put it in side loaded into your little binder um, you now have 360 degree protection from dust so there's nothing going to get in to damage that card um, definitely make sure you still sleeve them before you put them into any sort of binder but especially these ones this black rubber at the back has some texture to it so if you leave your cards in here for a long time with no sleeves um, you're going to find that you get some indents and potentially even some some black rubbing off on the card from that so definitely sleeve them before you put them in um, i personally prefer to leave my cards just in penny sleeves it's the cheapest it's the easiest they fit into these little binder pages really well um, so that is really good um, and they look nice so if you have um, different kinds of borders around the cards for example you might notice it it might stand out so i prefer to use the clear sleeves personally um, so that is an ultra pro binder this one cost me about 30 australian dollars so not super expensive um, but definitely worth looking into now, this is my personal favorite type of binder at the moment. This is by a brand called Vault X. I'll show you the labeling on the front. This is by a brand called Vault X. Um, the reason I like this one, so it's got a leather sort of feel on the outside, so it feels really luxe. It actually zips up all the way around. Um, and that's good because obviously you're not gonna be getting any dust inside if it's all zipped up. Um, it's a similar layout to the other binder. The pages feel pretty much exactly the same. You've got that sort of textured rubber. Um, you can fit your sleeved cards inside. So again, definitely sleeve them. Um, and again, they load into the side. So you've got that protection from the dust at the top. Um, another thing that's really beneficial about having this, the sleeves go into the side is if you ever wanted to take these binders to a card show and have them out on a table, um, it's a lot harder for people to steal cards if they're side loaded. That sounds awful, but it's true um, because otherwise you can sort of just sl slip them out the top. So having them side loaded protects you in that way as well. You're not gonna have anything fall out. If you did put the cards in raw without a sleeve you've got that risk of them moving around and potentially getting scratched um, but also that you you might potentially get some damage from that rubber at the back so these binders are great i really enjoy these um, i've been using these vault x binders for sets that i am really excited about so this is vmax climax i've got in here um, and then the cards that i've not spent quite as much money on i might use one of the other types of binders where it's not quite as expensive and not hard to um, fill it up so these vault x binders this cost me around 50 australian dollars so it it is fairly expensive, but you can fit a lot of cards in here. Um, so there's enough room for an entire set, which I think is really great. So as I said, there's a ton of different options. There's a lot of things I probably haven't even touched on. Um, so if you have different preferences for how you like to store and protect your cards, please leave us a comment down below. Let the community know and we can talk about it. I hope we can all learn from each other. Um, as I said, I am Pokemon Breaks on Instagram, Twitch, YouTube, and TikTok. It would mean the world to me if you dropped me a follow, um, leave me a comment or send me a message so we can keep in touch and be friends. Hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions or there's any any particular starting your collection content that you'd like to see next time, please leave it in the comment down below as well. And I will do my best to um, cover it in a future video. Until next time, please look after yourself. I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you around. Bye.